beautiful sunny Belfast and we are going over to our destination for today which is St. Anne's Cathedral. I'd have already guessed it from my clue earlier which is pretty terrible. It was, uh, this building is quite inspiring. Yeah, you like that? It's a spire hole by the back, that's the big, big pointy thing at the back of the building. I'm walking it past it now actually. That's St. Anne's Cathedral. You probably already know it if you're from Belfast or have visited the city a few times. Quite an imposing and beautiful building. But first I'm going to get a coffee with, with a friend. You'll probably know them. I was telling you I was meeting a friend today and... Do you recognise him? Hey! That's Matt. He's from Best of Belfast. And we're in this new uh, curated kitchen place, so... We're in a really good spot. It's opposite St. Anne's Cathedral. Definitely busy here. Great coffee. In the shelter there, uh, just after going for a coffee across the road from St. Anne's Cathedral in Curated Kitchen, uh, that is just there. Um, lovely, really, really nice, and they give us some creepy treats, so I was really kind of them, so definitely visit there, guys. Now I'm about to go through the hallowed doors of St. Anne's Cathedral, otherwise known as Belfast Cathedral, and I'm going to tell you a few facts about the building if you didn't know it already, and yeah. The stone of the building was laid in 1889 and the very first architect, there's been a few, uh, was Sir Thomas Drew. Built on top of the original church, which had been in operation since 1776. Not actually on top of the original church, like it didn't sit on top of it, but it was built on where the church was. And that church, the old one, continued until 1903. 1904, St. Anne's Cathedral, as it is now, was first opened. If you haven't been, it's definitely worth a visit. They do tours every day and uh, just a mission. But if you're coming in uh, for prayer, it's free of charge. An interesting fact that I actually did learn about the cathedral as I walk around is that it's sinking, like a lot of places seem to do in Belfast, including the upper clock. And that's because it was born. It was built on quite marshy ground and it's quite near the sea too. So as there's light coming through them, you can't really probably see them very well, but stained glass windows in here are absolutely stunning. They're probably some of the nicest I've seen in the world, and I've been to a lot of cathedrals around the world, and I especially love the ones at the very front there, stunning. I just ended a quick tour there from one of the, the guides here, Matt, and they do it all on a voluntary basis, which is extremely, extremely good of them. He's here every day, and Matt's here on Tuesday, he said, and he says he's the most knowledgeable. May want to dispute that, the other tour guide. Interesting fact about these stained glass windows, which are beautiful, by the way. The company who manufactured them were called White Friars, and if you look at the bottom right here in that rectangle there, that is their company logo, cheeky. And you actually hear an organ playing in the background too, they're doing organ uh, practice, so hopefully you can all hear me okay. Um, it's actually the second biggest organ in Northern Ireland, and the first biggest is in Ulster Hall. The only person to actually be buried within the cathedral is Lord Carson. He got a full state funeral within 1935, I believe it was, and that is his grave there. And it's made all out of Irish granite, I believe. Only a little bit about the organ earlier. Um, this is Ed. Uh, say hi, Ed. <laughs> um, he's one of the organists who plays in the cathedral. And what a beautiful instrument it is. It's the second biggest one in Northern Ireland. As I said, the first biggest is the one in Ulster Hall. I said he's going to play something for us here. So, Ed, you, you have at it there. That's, that's excellent. That looks very, very complicated, would you say it is, yeah? <laughs> so I can't really play this uh, a piece on the organ. That looks like such a complicated instrument. He, he does agree that it is a very, very complicated instrument to play. But um, he did a great job, so thanks very much, Ed. This is the Titanic Paul. Um, this was to mark the 100th anniversary of the sinking of the HMS Titanic. Um, it's made out of Irish linen and felt and also velvet, I believe, around the edges. Matt was telling me that it's made up of tiny little crosses and they go from big to the outside, small on the, the bottom, and that's to, 
to mark the depths of the ocean going down the ways. Um, it's quite moving actually. There's a lot of artifacts from the cathedral's history in this cabinet here. And the most interesting one I feel is this one here, it's a baptismal bowl. And that actually carried earth from six of the main counties in uh, Northern Ireland. And that was used in the burial of Edward Carson. These three stained glass windows are actually the only curved ones in the, the church, the cathedral. And they're actually from the original church that was here. And that was built in 1776. So the oldest artifact in the cathedral is actually this thing behind me. That's the Coventry Cross. And that was from Coventry Cathedral. Actually 600 years old. And that was found in the debris of the cathedral that was bombed in 1940. This flag up here is actually a commemoration flag to mark the first US soldiers to disembark during World War II. Um, from Belfast in 1942. Uh, it actually has 48 states. And it's still part of the United States that were at the time. Commemoration windows and flags are about the cathedral, so have a little look around if you're down here. And these ones here to commemorate those who lost their lives in World War II in the Irish Brigade. I was informed about that the cathedral always wanted a spire um, because the marshy ground couldn't be done. So above us here, hanging and it goes straight up through the roof, is the Spire of Hope, which was installed in 2007. I was told it's made out of titanium and stainless steel, I believe, and that was manufactured in Switzerland. Here is the Chapel of the Holy Spirit, which was built in 1932. It was consecrated then, and this is the place where you can have prayer. And their seraphim angels, which is the top choir of angels, they have six wings apparently. It's very interesting, this little carving here is a pelican, and that is to represent Jesus. And pelicans are supposed to be very, very good pair. Given a bit of a gruesome story about what they do. It's very interesting. This isn't for the faint of hearted. Um, I'm warning you here. The pelican will, when their children are starving, they have no nothing to feed them. They will actually make a hole in their chest and feed their kids their own blood. Yeah. little things in cathedrals you might not notice and you might just step over like this here there's actually a labyrinth and the white pass will lead to the altar and the black will lead to dead ends and that's meant to be a represent sin and faith and the baptistry again and this mosaic up here is particularly stunning that has 150,000 pieces to it and that was all laid by hand imagine doing that so again about the symbolism in the cathedrals this black tiling here represents sin this red, penitence, and the white represents grace. Come to the cathedral also, this mosaic depicts St. Patrick, yes. and that is the ship that brought him over. And this is him representing the Holy Trinity in the shamrock. And to the left is pagan Ireland, and to the right, Christian Ireland. Another symbolism. So that's me done for today. I hope you all enjoyed it. That was a really, really good tour of uh, Belfast Cathedral. Thanks to all the team for showing me about and letting me film them in the place. And if you're from Belfast and I've been there, or if you're from outside the city, definitely worth a, a visit. There's tours every day, I believe. I like uh, the Seven Dabs on Fact Friday. And if you have any suggestions for anything you want covered in the future, then just give us a DM or email us on talkingandbelfast at gmail.com. And you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thanks very much. Bye.